I really can't believe that it's been a hundred Chateau Diaries. This is the spot where I filmed my first actually quite cringeworthy and embarrassing introduction to the very first Chateau Diaries vlog. Welcome to the Chateau de la Lande and welcome to our first ever entry in Lalande's video diary. You've been asking me if I could maybe take some videos of daily life, which is a little nerve wracking as we've never done it before, but I'm going to try. When I look back, I, I just think, oh, I was so stiff, I didn't know what I was doing, but I'm really, really glad that that didn't matter and that I started. But I do want to warn all of you, if you decide to go back and watch the Chateau Diaries from the beginning, I promise you the quality gets better if you stick with it. I started the vlog to show the preparations for the party that I hosted for all of the other Chateau owners from Escape to the Chateau DIY. And many of the characters who appear in today's videos made their first appearances in those early episodes. There's Michael Petherick dancing with Dana, and that was the first day that I ever met him. And there's Mummy with Percy, who's showing off the first of his magnificent outfits, which become legendary at Lalande. And Jerry, well, you can see him in his tartan trousers in the background, but his first speaking appearance on the Chateau Diaries was hilariously oh. this one. That ah. is there. Right. We have to stop giving the guests ready break. <laughs> Yes, from day one, Scott Mann was fixing this chateau. And the first ever sighting of Mummy was of her in a bad mood, trying to hide it. Mm. Oh, suddenly you saw me and you started smiling. <laughs> now we see how you shout at us. <laughs> yeah, caught, you're caught. It's tough living in this house. And it turned out that by vlog eight, the people in this house still didn't know what a vlog was. I want to tell you, you have a mistake on your vlogs. I have a mistake? Mm. No, what have I done? You say a vlog. Instead of a vlog or shadow vlog? It's a vlog. That's what it's called when it's a video vlog. Oh. That's correct. You didn't Ooh. make a mistake. <laughs> There's a crazy cast of ever-changing characters in this house and I know it's really hard to keep up with. And I never want to interrupt the diaries to stop every five minutes and explain who each person is, but I think it's nice to take a little bit of time now to introduce some of the characters to you. First and foremost, though probably the person you've seen the least, there is the elusive Nick, the man with whom I bought the Chateau de Lalande 15 years ago. He refuses to be seen or heard on my vlog. So world, here he is, the best friend that made everything possible. The elusive Nick. I asked him if as a special treat for my 100th vlog, he'd say anything, but he said no. He remains elusive. So we're having celebratory smoked salmon and scrambled eggs. And of course, for a day like today, champagne. And I can tell you one thing, the elusive Nick is pretty excited. And this is what we're having for lunch. I've got the champagne, Nicky. I've been saving these for a very special occasion. And I just want to say, Nicky, that without your brilliance in saying, let's go for it and buy a chateau and for it not to just be a dream, we would not be here enjoying that <laughs> to another 15 years Nikki mmm oh it's delicious Nick and I met at university when we were just 19 and we've been best friends ever since and the very first time I met him I said one day you and I are going to buy a chateau together and I think he thought I was completely mad so here we are I moved in 15 years ago with Nick and my parents to the Chateau de la Lande. Sadly, my father died just a few years after we'd arrived here, but I'm glad he knew this house and that he loved it as much as I did. And since then, my mother, after some very difficult years, found the loveliest man, Percy, who is South African, and they got married here at Lalande last summer, which was one of the most glorious events that we've ever had here. My mother and Percy have become quite legendary on the Chateau Diaries. My mother is quite a character. It is awful to be right all the time. I have no idea why you're dressed it's like so that. It's dirty. Because I'm, I'm, I'm going into that dirty room and it's filthy. I just want to show everyone your, your, yes. your safety footwear. Everything can go in the machine, you see. Mm -hmm. I can't believe you're my mother. No, I, I have my doubts personally too. I think 
think my mother to this day is slightly bewildered that I'm her daughter. She still believes that somewhere out there there's this super organized, high powered lawyer that somehow at birth was switched with another woman's child and she ended up with this version. I love you very much. Thank you so much. Is there anything you'd like to say in return? Not at all. <laughs> But deep down, we adore each other. Tiny, ferocious bundle. My mother and Percy live here every summer and I love it when they're here. One of the most satisfying things we've finally been able to do was to create her own apartment for her in the attics. And that was a huge renovation project here. It was an epic task, transforming a disused, grotty attic into a beautiful apartment. Everything had to go up the scaffolding. Here are the men battling to get the fridge up. We were on a tight budget, so all of the furniture had to come from other rooms in the chateau that had excess furniture. And this is the moment that I found the sofa for 40 euros in the local charity shop. The imposing bed crown was found in our attics and I put the curtains up myself. I'm putting up the curtains for the bed crown in my mother's apartment. And it's incredibly fiddly. And it's extreme curtaining because it has to be done really high up. But the end result was worth all those months of hard work. My mother was delighted and it feels so good to have another area of the chateau looking beautiful. It now means that Percy and Mummy have their own place to escape to when they're at the chateau, which is also very important. Percy dazzles us with his sartorial skills. We never know what he's going to be wearing in the evening. He can spend all day long working super hard, getting grubby, but at dinner he outdresses us all. Percy! For Michael's arrival and because we said that Jerry's going away. Oh, that is absolutely beautiful. I feel very underdressed now. We should dress for the occasion. Yes, we see. should. And then, by far, the biggest character in this house, my brother Gerald. Yes, Jerry's very, very useful when we're doing the crumb. And who could ever forget the day that he became Scott Man? Gerald, do you um, want to talk me through today's outfit? Yeah, well, this is what normally we are. I thought I would just dress down a wee bit today. Mm -hmm. I'm usually a little bit brighter. Well, I'm... obviously there's a lot of tartan going on, which is confusing enough, but what confuses me even more is why do you have trousers on underneath your shorts? Because Superman wears his underpants <laughs> above his trousers. Okay, good, good. So this and is. And I a... think there's a time when somebody has got to make a stand. There's not many super Marvel heroes left. And God knows we need a Superman in this house. You know, from now on, I want to be known as Scott Man. Now, many of you have asked, are we genetically brother and sister? And I've explained this before on Escape to the Chateau DIY. No, my brother met my parents when he was 12 and he has his own family whom he's very close to as well. But at the age of 12, when he met my mother and father in Glasgow, he just spent so much time with them that when they then moved to England, when he must have been about 16, 17, he decided to move with them. So my entire life from the moment I was born, I have lived with Jerry and my parents were so busy when I was growing up that they couldn't really spend much time with me and Jerry and I were together all of the time. He would just push me around in my pram all day long, play with me patiently for hours and we're still inseparable and he is absolutely hilarious and every time he comes into this chateau he fills it with laughter but to the point that I'm crying with laughter. I have arrived. Leaving on a jet plane. I don't know when I'll be back again. At the time that I bought with Nick, I had a boyfriend called Michael, and he and I were living together in London. And unlike most men on the planet, Michael didn't say, no, don't buy with another man in another country and move away. He said, you have to do this. This is your dream. This is your opportunity. Bye with Nick, I will visit whenever I can. And he fell in love with this house as much as I did. And although we're no longer together, we split up many years ago, he and Nick are my best friends. And finally last year, he bought into La Land as well. So we have the three owners together, Nick, Michael, and myself. Michael has arrived at La Land and he's going to be here a whole week. It's super exciting. That has got Michael Potts's name written all over it. Is there no keeping this man out of the water? What the? Oh, you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> I don't know why, but there seems to be no getting that man out of the moat in summer, even though it is 
disgusting. This is lovely, Steph. You should really come in and enjoy it. But goodness knows, no one can man a barbecue quite like him. Though, of course, he calls it a braai. Oh, sitting on the top of the bale, watching the sheep run away. And over the course of the years, there have been a cast of volunteers who've come from all over the world and who've immediately become part of the family here. I think the volunteer that you will have seen the most of is Marie from Norway, who lived here for a very long time with me and became one of my closest friends. And she is hilarious, the most fun person you could ever imagine living with. This is just a little something you've slipped into for watching Escape to the Chateau. Yeah. Marie has devised a unique new school of charades <laughs> that involves acting out silently a random scene from a movie until anyone guesses it. It's quite niche. Benjamin Button? Yeah! yeah. Oh <laughs> She's also incredibly talented and would make stunning floral decorations for the house and amazing food. My side of the table, and this is your side of the table. So now we're going to see in this afternoon's cooking marathon mm -hmm. who makes the most mess, aren't we? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's not going to be me, is it? No. <laughs> Have you been have you been cooking with chocolate at all? I can't. I, it's hard for me to tell. What? Has some of it gone into the jars? Yeah, and on my and the mm, But it's going to be good, and it's no small thing to make chocolate mousse for forty people. Marie's famous chocolate mousse with a pineapple coulis and a crumble topping. Also, her food had the weirdest names. He is making, what is it Marie, what is it? Orgasmic figs! Oh, I've been wanting these for ages! Yeah. Finally I get to taste your orgasmic, orgasmic figs. figs! Yes, so... With the figs from the garden? Figs from the garden, mm -hmm. apples from the garden, black currants from the garden, everything is caramelised. But I think one of my favourite vlog moments with Marie was when she accidentally pranged the jaguar and my mother found out. Was there another car? Why did you do that? <laughs> It's all right, you can just stay here, Marie. What can I say? <laughs> I'll tell you what's going to happen. I baked your favourite cake today. Yeah. Oh, that, that old chestnut. Yes. Percy yes. will be able to fix that yeah. in no time. No, yes. you won't be able to. Jesus couldn't fix that. But the good news is, we got the number plates for the new car. Here's one. Yay! 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 All's well that ends well. We're just going to have to switch off the camera while we all beat up Mary. <laughs> okay? The next time you see Mary, she'll have a few bandages. There. Go! S stop! Stop! It's on record! Mary, is there a reason you're trying to sweeten me up with pancakes? Just because you deserve the best. Did anything happen to the Jaguar, Mary? <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you want to talk about what happened to the no. Jaguar? No. <laughs> Just eat, uh, eating my pancake. Okay, you, you get on with it, enjoying that pancake in peace. Thank you. I'm sorry I brought it up, it was inconvenient of me. <laughs> I'm so busy. <laughs> One of the best things about having all of the volunteers here is that each person tends to cook something from their own country. So we have these amazing dinners with various dishes from all over the world. Zeta is making dumplings. Yes. And dumplings are basically my favorite food, so. Really? Yes. Oh. Can you tell us what we are having for lunch? Because this is very exciting. Mm. We are having a uh, curried tuna salad. Mm. What are you making? Pakora. We are making, this is a pakora. This is, uh, we call this pakora. This is onion. I feel and... like the luckiest woman in the world right now. <laughs> <laughs> and this is called biryani. This is most favorite and most uh, famous food in Asian countries. You've also made something from your culture. Yes, I made a tiramisu. And David, you're also making something oh, yes. of oh, your own culture. Scones and tea. <laughs> Many of you may not recognise David from that clip because he has changed so much in the months that he's been visiting La Lande. Here he is, cleaning the fountain with Michael on his very first visit to La Lande. He came with one of my greatest friends, Oliver Strong, who's an amazing artist, and who was taking photos of the men at work in order to create a masterpiece. A lot of my friends who are able to work from home spend a lot of time at La Lande, and that's what happened in David's case. And now he's become the chiselled lycra man that you all know so well. David is taking the mickey out of me because I'm under an eider down on a sofa. Down and it is so hot in the sun as, I mean, really? 
Yes, really. I'm happy here under my eider down making my vlog. And of course, I cannot make this episode without talking about the multi-talented Mr. Petherick. It's refueling the, the old range cooker. Meeting him was one of the best things that happened from taking part in Escape to the Chateau DIY. Stephanie, we need to get you out of bed because I have a project for us to do today. I've ordered some ostrich feathers, which are coming in the post today. It's ridiculous. It is the most ridiculous thing we have ever done. Ta-da! Should we see if the dog likes it? Yes! Right, I'm gonna find her. She is very regal. She suits it. She's actually started to defend the bed now. What are we going to watch, Stephanie? <laughs> I've looked back over all of the Chateau Diaries in preparation for making this 100th video for you, and I've realised that there are a lot of themes that keep coming up at Life in La Lande. We seem to dress up a lot. Today is another classic. This is vintage Mugler, and as I walk downstairs, and I'm the only person in the house who dressed up, by the way, but I felt I'm celebrating, so I shall. I walked downstairs and Nick looked at me and said, you look a bit weird. So. <laughs> I think that just goes to show that if you feel like dressing up, do so regardless of anyone around you. We dress up a lot in vintage clothes and costumes and all sorts of things from the charity shops in things that we've made ourselves and historical outfits. Michael has made me into an evil vampire queen and now it is time to go and dance the night away. Oh, hi. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I just came back from the war in a box. <laughs> Sexy dead song. Sexy dead soldier. A normal Wednesday night can be an excuse for a party here. There's a lot of dancing in the kitchen. There's an enormous amount of food. We seem to spend most of our time just churning food out in the kitchen and having big dinner parties. And also I've realized that laying the table is a huge part of daily life here. We care about laying the table. We care about eating in different rooms and making different scenarios. Everything's a little bit of a play on fantasy as well as the hard reality of chateau life which in our case is a lot of renovation. Ian, maybe you should get into one of the other ovens to help properly. Maybe I should. <laughs> maybe. With the amount of time to save, what I should do is just get in here and have a little snooze. <laughs> I mean, I've got the soot up oh, here. I feel, I feel like a turkey. I will try to fix it. Okay, yes, right, this bridge. Removing all these... Uh, sort of Indiana Jones style death trap now. Yes. And you fixed the bridge? Indeed. I haven't been down here since you fix the bridge that is spectacular and you can jump on it <laughs> it's always going to be a lot of work we'll never be finished there's always going to be so many more things to do but it's fun now I don't think that any of you can imagine what a change you've made to our lives just by watching these videos. And now I want to show you one of the most exciting things that's going to happen because of this vlog. And for that, we have to go over to the chapel. I have a really, really big announcement to make, which is, as you know, I've been wanting the restoration of this chapel to happen for a long time. We've already re-roofed it. That's the first thing we ever did when we got to the chateau. But there's so much work still to do to restore this jewel of 19th century ecclesiastical architecture. The restorer is going to start in March and the first phase is going to cost 3,000 euros. And I started monetizing my videos on YouTube back in September or October and I was expecting to receive really pennies from it because for 1,000 monetized views, which means 1,000 times that one of you watches an advert, I receive four euros. So obviously it takes quite a lot of people watching the adverts before my videos before it adds up. But incredibly, things went so well with the advent calendar over Christmas and so many of you were watching. And more importantly, so many of you have kindly not been skipping the ads. And that has added up to 3,000 euros in total from YouTube. So it is in fact you who by watching these vlogs are going to be paying for the next phase of restoration of this chapel. And that's going to be fixing this vault up here, which had collapsed before we bought the chateau. Work on that is going to start in March and it's only because of you that this is possible. So thank you. Honestly, I feel like crying. I feel quite emotional about it. 
Thank you so much. Your visits help us enormously. And if any of you would like to come and stay with us, there is a link to our reservation system below. But as I told you earlier in the chapel, just from watching the vlogs and from watching the adverts before them, you make a very real physical difference to the state of this chateau and you help to restore it so that it will last for more years and more generations can enjoy it in the future. But on an emotional level, I want to thank you most of all for all of the kind comments that you leave because I feel such an enormous amount of support from people all around the world and I can tell you that for many years here when Nick had to leave and my father died and my mother moved to South Africa, I felt very alone here in the restoration. I didn't give up hope because I always loved the house and I always knew that it was the right thing to be doing. But now to have all of your support and to see all of these changes happening is a dream come true. So thank you for watching. And for those of you who haven't subscribed already, then please click on the subscribe button and join us in all of our future adventures at the Chateau. Cheers from Laland.